A lot of people really struggle to detach from narcissistic people and to let go of that feeling of needing to continually communicate with them or to wonder what they're doing or who they're with or just break free from thinking about a narcissistic person that they have gotten out of their life. Or some people just can't even leave the situation, right? Like if this is you and you cannot leave the situation, but you are so enmeshed with the narcissistic person and the things they say to you and the gaslighting and, and you're so much involved with the battle that goes on there that you can't do things like not engage and keep yourself safe from them escalating in situations. This video is for you. My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and heal from narcissistic toxic people in your life. Okay, I'm just gonna go through a list of ways to help you detach from a narcissist. The first thing people always say is go no contact. If you are able to go no contact with that narcissistic person, it really will help you. Remember that no contact is a way to help you detach from them. It's to help you break the trauma bonds and it's to help you moving your life forward toward things that are actually in your life and worthy of your time and get away from the attention that is placed on things in your past like that narcissistic person. If you're low contact, this needs to be modified obviously because you need to remain in contact and there is different techniques for how to help with that and I have a video on low contact that I will put right up there. It's very useful when you have been with a toxic person to understand what happened. And through understanding what happened and through talking about what happened and getting some validation for the things that you experienced being actually real, which you know they're real, but it's hard to believe they're real when the narcissist is gaslighting you. It right? gives you a clearer understanding of the big picture. It allows you to see the narcissistic person exactly as they are, right? and to see yourself as you are and so that you can see separately what is going on in this situation. And with that, trying to see things as an outside observer, trying to step back inside yourself, put your emotions aside for one second and look at the bigger picture, you will start to see that that narcissistic person continually manipulated in your relationship no matter what you did. No matter how many changes you made, no matter how many therapists you sought out, no matter how many articles you read, no matter what you did, the manipulation continued. And as you see that, you start to allow them to be that narcissistic, manipulative person that they actually are, right? We can't change a person. We can only observe their behaviors and offer them feedback on how it affects the relationship. And if they will not make the change, then it really is them. This one's a little bit difficult to do on your own sometimes. Please know that there is coaching or group coaching available to talk through this if you need it or find someone else like a therapist or another coach, okay, that can help you get to this place. This is important. This will help you stay out of future narcissistic abusive relationships if you can get to the root of this. What attracted you in the first place to this particular person or this particular situation? And I realize this is not going to apply to every narcissistic situation out there. Sometimes it's just the way life is, right? It's when we're talking about institutional narcissism or narcissism within a group or something like that. This may not apply, but when we're talking about individual situations and especially romantic relationships with narcissists, why were you attracted in the first place? What was it? that you felt you needed, that this person was able to give you from the get-go. Because remember, they groomed you. So what was it you needed? And when you can figure that out and you can start to give that to yourself, repair those places in yourself that need some healing, that need some support and some love and some care, then maybe when you see one in the future, you'll catch on when they start grooming you really quick. But not only that, it will help you to detach from the narcissistic person that's already in your life because you will see that person never was able to give you the things that were required and needed for your own well-being. They were faking it, they were grooming you, and they were using all of this vulnerability and all of this sharing against you not okay. Talking to other survivors can be so useful. So please, you guys, share in the comments with one another. Talk back and forth in the discussion down there in the comments of these videos if, you, if you'd like. 
check out the information in the videos for things like coaching, group coaching, or the peer support so that you can get some help and have other people you can relate to. So when we're talking about emotional detachment, we have to remember that the emotions that we're feeling are real, that the things that we felt accurate, okay? And they have a place in our history and in our story that needs validation. So allow the emotions, allow the feelings that you're feeling, give them some credit for trying to take care of you and for trying to give you warnings. Like a lot of people get hung up on why did I stay? I saw it. Why did I allow it to happen? Well, if you get stuck on the why, that's a little bit of a, a red flag to yourself that there needs to be some awareness or enlightenment around that particular topic. Because the real question could be, what is it I didn't learn that I need to learn? Or what is it I wasn't listening to? And how can I now listen better in the future? So, so in this, a lot of people realize that it's been a pattern in their life. When they get to this point, and they're not allowing emotions because it feels like those emotions that they had got them there. Does that make sense? It, this is the part where you start to really feel yourself. This is feeling and, and experiencing and allowing these emotions is a giant opening into your healing. Please do it with support if you need it. So to detach from a narcissist, stay away from their friends and family. Stay away from their social circles anything that they do that they are conducting things, right? Because you know, narcissists are not just narcissists with you. They're narcissists with everyone they talk to. Let, let go of that idealized thinking about the relationship, okay? You can't get back to the beginning because no one can get back to the beginning in a relationship, for real, no one. There's always a sense of, ooh, wonder, who is this person? Oh my gosh, how exciting. There's often a sense of just basic idealization in any relationship from anyone. Now, a narcissist takes that to an extreme. You're never gonna get back to that purely love bombing phase because it wasn't real relating. It was somebody manipulating you through them feeling good about somebody else knowing nothing about them. They could create a world that served them, okay? And in that creating of this world that served them, this fantasy world of idealization, you got lost, okay? And you start to believe that's what the real part of the relationship is. That's who they really are. If only I could get back there. We have to let go of that. That isn't reality for anyone, any situation, any relationship, okay? Relationships have good and bad. They, a person is a real and whole human being. So stop idealizing that part of the relationship. It's a fantasy of what a relationship could be. It's not a reality of what relationships are. And I know everyone has a good side. I understand that you had good times with that person that things were great sometimes, or that part of them is really fun, or that part of them is so whatever positive you see, okay? Yes, of course. But I always say, even Jeffrey Dahmer's neighbors thought he was a nice guy, okay? There is a good face anyone can put on. Remember that narcissists are always wearing a mask when they are interacting with other people, especially when they're love bombing, all right? And so the good that you see could literally just be them having fun in the moment or them distracted by how amazing they think they are or whatever version of reality they're in at that moment. The good that you see isn't enough to erase the toxic manipulation and the emotional abuse that they inflict upon you. Get rid of all the reminders, you guys. Get rid of the photographs. Get rid of the mementos, the gifts, the reminders, change your furniture around, whatever you need to do to create the space around you clean and pure and cleansed from the toxic person that was in your life. Now, this is important. Focus on you, on your future, on your reality, on what you need to create a life for yourself. Stop focusing backward. Focus in the right here and now looking forward. And do not bring the baggage of that narcissistic person and project it forward by looking at their social media, wondering what they're doing, spending a minute more with an emotional dialogue inside your own head about the narcissist behavior from this point forward. Allow them to move forward with their toxic abuse elsewhere, okay? As horrible as that is, it's what they're gonna do. They will not ever change for another person, okay? They won't change. Accept it allow it, move forward and do your own life. 
So when you're driving down the street or when you're walking down the street and you pass a landmark where you guys used to spend time together, create a scene for yourself that allows you to take back that space. In other words, if, if you go to a restaurant you used to go to, don't go where you know they're going to be. Like say it's in another town and it's somewhere you went a couple times. Go in and have a new experience. Talk to people. Look at new things. Experience it for yourself in that moment. If you're not ready to do that, take a step back and try it a few weeks later. We have to reclaim the spaces in our life. We have to reclaim our world that's around us for ourselves. So I say this a lot, you guys, but being in the present helps a lot. The past is in the past. The future is forward, right? Like be in the moment right now as much as you possibly can. Mindfulness, meditation, all of that is useful for for learning how to do this. But in truth, a very simple thing to do is just pay attention to a part of your body, like a part that is benign and not hurting and not causing you any problems, whatever part that is. And if you don't have one, take a deep breath in and exhale and notice the air going in and out. Stay in this moment for just a second. Things quiet down, things slow down. If you're anxious, they may speed up a second, take another breath and slow down. Being in the present moment means looking at what's around you. Sometimes it's looking for things that are a certain color, looking for things that are a certain shape, getting into this very moment that you're in right now and allowing yourself to just be present. It helps. It helps you not constantly race back to the past, constantly not wish you could make your past your future. Learning all the red flags is helpful if you keep reading about the red flags, having that list of toxic things that that person did, that can help you detach. But most of all, observe. Observe yourself when you notice yourself really wanting to reach back to that narcissistic person, remembering what trauma bonds are all about. Go watch the videos I have here on trauma bonding to help you understand what it is you're going through and that it will pass. And time does not necessarily heal these wounds, effort can heal these wounds, okay? Being present to yourself can heal these wounds. Talking it through can heal these wounds. So you guys keep watching these videos for more information on how to heal from toxic narcissistic people in your life. And I'll see you on the next one.